Welcome to the second video in my cortisol series. If you missed the first video, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. Go ahead and check that out so you know a little bit more about cortisol and what's going on, and then come back and watch this video and learn what to do about it. We learned in part one of this series that cortisol is a hormone produced by the adrenal cortex. And while it is a powerful anti-inflammatory, it's also a stress hormone. And so that's why we need it in the proper balance and in the right amount. You'll also remember that while we don't want it either too high or too low, we also want it in a very specific pattern throughout the day. It should rise slightly in the morning to help us wake up, rise continuously throughout the day to give us energy and keep us going. And then you need it to drop low at night so your melatonin production can come up and help you fall asleep. Now let's move on to discussing the different dysregulations you may see in cortisol patterns. It's important to know your disruptive pattern so that you can address it correctly. Pattern number one is high free cortisol and high metabolized cortisol. What this means is that your body is just constantly pumping out way too much cortisol throughout the day and it's not clearing it as well either. This is usually the result of diet and lifestyle and these individuals typically feel really on edge and really anxious all the time. Some things you can do about this are an anti-inflammatory diet, gut healing, avoiding alcohol and stimulants, and weight loss if applicable because fat actually can produce even more cortisol in addition to the cortisol your adrenal cortex produces. Guided meditation apps are also really helpful for lowering your cortisol naturally. And lots of work on sleep is important here. I have several videos on how to improve your sleep. I'll leave some links in the description box below. Make sure you check those out if you need some help improving your sleep. And finally, using soothing essential oils has actually been shown in trials to help reduce cortisol. One of the best known essential oils for lowering cortisol is called Clary Sage. If you need a little extra help figuring out which oils are right for you and how to order them, I'll make sure to leave my email in the description box below. Feel free to email me and I'll help you out. Now, moving on to dysregulated cortisol pattern number two, we have low free and low metabolized cortisol. This is most likely a communication error between the brain and the adrenals and what's typically called true adrenal fatigue or adrenal dysfunction. Symptoms of low free and low metabolized cortisol are muscle weakness, poor recovery from exercise, joint pain, unstable mood and depression, getting shaky or lightheaded upon standing, reduced stress tolerance and digestive issues and food intolerances. This is a difficult problem to fix without addressing the root cause of what got you into the situation in the first place. Some potential root causes are PTSD, long-term chronic stress, lack of nutrients needed for cortisol synthesis, sleep apnea, thyroid dysfunctions, Addison's disease and traumatic brain injuries. This pattern is one of the longest and hardest recoveries, usually taking between six and 12 months to really see progress here. And remember, if you don't address that underlying root cause, it's gonna be really difficult to overcome this pattern. But while you're working on that root cause and working on recovering from this cortisol imbalance, there are some things that you can do to help support your body in the process. Your main focus should be on allowing your body to rest and recover. This means taking it easy with your work workouts, prioritizing sleep, lowering your stress levels, and really focusing on a nutrient-dense healing restorative diet. Now moving on to pattern number three, which is low free and high metabolized cortisol. This happens when the body is making a normal amount of cortisol, but it's being broken down and metabolized too aggressively. Calming and supporting the HPA access without overstimulating it are keys to recovery here. Some other things you can do to work on your low free and high metabolized cortisol pattern is to work on detoxification and gut health. Avoiding caffeine is also really helpful as is losing weight if that's applicable. Prioritizing getting good sleep is also really helpful here. And lastly, make sure you're getting enough protein for you. Now moving on to pattern number four, which is high free cortisol and low metabolized cortisol. This is often a sign of low thyroid function. So get your thyroid checked if you think this pattern might apply to you. I have a whole video on how to check your thyroid. And in the description box of that video, I even have a free downloadable PDF that walks you through what levels should be tested, what should they be, and I even tell you how to order your own labs at home without a doctor. With this symptom picture, your metabolism is impaired. So the body doesn't make as much cortisol and the clearance is really sluggish as well. 
because when the thyroid slows down, everything slows down. Symptoms of high free and low metabolized cortisol are anxiety and depression, fatigue, brain fog, weight gain, and sleep problems. Some of the potential root causes of this problem are thyroid disorders, like I mentioned in the beginning, but also there's a few other ones that can play in as well. There could be chronic inflammation, poor liver detoxification, estrogen dominance, or low body weight. To start to work on this pattern, some helpful strategies are to work on detoxification, increase your cruciferous vegetable consumption, avoid alcohol and caffeine, and work on slowing yourself down. Give meditation or yoga a try. Some calming essential oils have also been shown to help, such as ylang, -ylang and lavender. So as you can see from the first and the second video in this series, cortisol is so much more complex than just simply being too high or too low. And each specific pattern is going to have its own underlying root cause, symptom picture, and resolution as well. This is where working with a qualified practitioner can be really helpful, but there's still some basic things that everyone can do that are gonna be helpful for their cortisol, no matter which pattern they have. You can improve your digestion, reduce your stress, improve your sleep, and eat nutrient-dense anti-inflammatory foods. So I recommend starting there no matter what's going on with you. If you're looking for help balancing your cortisol, I'll put a link in the description box below to apply to work with me and my team. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos when they come out.